Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our annual QTAC Information and Scholarship Evening. My name is Deidre Tyrrell, and I'm the Director of Pathways here at Nudgee College. Tonight is designed to help our students become familiar with how to apply to Queensland institutions should they wish to engage in further study next year. Using information directly from QTAC, I will take you through how students apply for courses in 2021 and identify issues of which to be wary. We will also hear from Queensland's major universities who have agreed to join us, and thank you very much for that. And since we've got a number of students interested in the Defence Force after school, we have some of, uh, the represent, some of their representatives here tonight as well. At the end of the evening, we will open the floor to our panel of presenters and answer questions which have been sent through by our community previously. Thank you for sending those through. If there are further questions, I would ask you, our audience, to include those questions in comments on your screen and we'll endeavour to answer them. If by some chance we don't get to them all, I will forward the relevant information after our presentation. The aim of this evening is to prepare our Year 12 students for the admission process to tertiary study and scholarship applications. So to get the, start, uh, the evening started, in the usual way, we will actually begin with prayer. I'd like to invite the Dean of Learning and Teaching, Mr. Jason Sepatos, to the floor, please. Good evening, everyone. A particular welcome to the uh, boarding students who are here in the audience live with us and to all of those boarding families and day school families at home out there, wherever you may be this evening. I was remarking that we're a little bit more like a television station than a school these days, but the show must go on. Boys, the, uh, the important thing is at the start of the year, Mr Mara addressed you and he talked about St Joseph. And so I'm going to pick up on that theme again. And I think in these times, we're a little bit uncertain, we're a little bit anxious, and we need to demonstrate faith and we need to demonstrate some trust. This evening is one step along that roadmap I spoke about that helps you achieve the certification and the pathway that you wish to. So with that in mind, we'll just take a moment to gather ourselves. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Joseph, you lived your life in loving fulfilment of duty. You supported the Holy Family of Nazareth with the work of your hands. You know our aspirations, our hardships, our hopes. You knew to a well trial, labour and weariness, but amid the worries of life, your soul was full of deep peace and sang out in true joy through intimacy with God's Son entrusted to you and with Mary, his mother. In your example, we see that we do not work alone. Teach us to find Jesus in those who are near and to care and love him faithfully as you have done. Amen. Live Jesus in our hearts. May the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. So I'd now like to present some information uh, gained directly from QTAC, just on the process. If you could play the video, please. Good evening again, everybody. Tonight, I'll present information directly from the Queensland Tertiary Admissions Centre, which outlines the process for year 12 students to apply for courses in 2021. I'll also outline admissions criteria, um, provide some EAS information and alternative pathways for entry. In addition, I'll look at how to preference your options and how to accept offers made. QTAC is a not-for-profit organisation which is owned by seven of the major Queensland tertiary institutions. Its function is to determine the most suitable students to whom offers should be made and to make those offers. It also has the task of calculating and awarding ATARs. QTAC generates offers for many Queensland institutions, but if you wish to study interstate, you will need to apply to the appropriate organisation as indicated on the diagram. It is possible to receive offers from different states and then you decide from there. Different institutions determine their own admission criteria and this will vary from university to university. QTAC is employed to apply that criteria, apply that criteria appropriately. When applying to QTAC, you need to ask yourself two questions. Do I meet the minimum entry requirements and will I have a rank high enough to get into the course? This is referred to the merit round. 
If at the time of the offer you don't have a high enough rate to gain entry to that course, then your application moves on to your next preference. So what are the eligibility requirements? These vary, but could include age requirements, subject requirements, portfolio, audition, interviews, essays, personal statements, questionnaires or exams. For example, UCAP are for entry to medicine. Some courses require you to submit portfolios or attend auditions before a certain date. So you need to check this with a specific institution to ensure you don't miss out. How is merit decided? Year 12 students are not the only ones applying for university entry. QTAC takes all students and their qualifications and converts into a rank, which can then be compared to others. The most common form of merit moving forward will be the ATAR. The ATAR is a primary mechanism used nationally now for tertiary admissions, and it indicates your position relative to other students. It is a 2,000 point scale going from 99.95 down to 30. ATARs less than 30 will be expressed as 30 or less. The ATAR will be calculated by QTAC. Sometimes when speaking with students and parents, I find there is some confusion over the Queensland Certificate of Education, or QCE, and the um, Australian Tertiary Admission Rank, or ATAR. All of our students are striving for a QCE which certifies learning and shows that you have achieved a specific standard of education at senior school level and may be considered by employers in the general community. The ATAR, on the other hand, is a number which tells QTAC about your position compared to other students in the state. And the only intended purpose of the ATAR is to assist with selecting applicants for tertiary study. I just wanted to point out here too that the method for calculating the ATAR has not changed with the impacts of COVID. The only change is to the number of assessment tasks which are going to be considered, but the method of calculation will in fact be the same. There still needs to be some process for ranking students' results to determine tertiary offers. Some universities have altered their admission criteria, and I will let the representatives from the individual universities discuss this. How it will work is that your Unit 3 and 4 results and any certificates or diploma qualifications that you may gain will be banked into your QCAA learning account by NAGI or the relevant training organisation. You do not have to supply any other records of your qualifications unless QTAC requests that you do. QTAC then accesses the results, applies, scaling and calculates your ATAR. This will be released on December the 19th ready for Christmas. You can access your ATAR via an ATAR account, which can be set up for the 4th of August, the same day as QTAC applications open. Course information can be found on the QTAC website, and I would encourage you to research the entry requirements and prerequisites of potential courses before you submit your QTAC application. As you can see from this example, which is a Bachelor of Paramedicine at Griffith University, there is information about the course and entry requirements. It also includes the start date of February 2020, as this is a course that's currently running, and the date that offers will be sent out by QTAC, which is the 15th of January 2020. It also includes other information, including the location of the campus. This isn't so vital at the moment with online learning, but it will become more important as students return to campus. Here's another example. If you look at the admissions criteria for the Bachelor of Nursing at USQ, you can see that the only subject prerequisite is English. The 4SA reference means that the student must have achieved at least a C grade over four semesters. This is in last year's language as QTAC have not yet updated their site, but the meaning is similar. When updated, you will see a reference to achieving a C grade in English for units three and four. In recommended study, you'll see a reference to Maths A, which is now General Maths, and a Science. The subjects listed in recommended study are not essential to gain entry to the course, but it is considered that the prior knowledge will assist you in completing that course. You may also see references to assumed knowledge in various course information. Again, this doesn't mean if you have not studied the subjects, you'll be precluded from the course. What it means is that lectures will pitch the content of the coursework, assuming you have the knowledge from the specified subject at a year 12 level. 
Due to the institution's responses to the COVID-19 crisis, some open days have been cancelled or moved to online events. I have previously forwarded information on this, but the QTAC website has all of the information contained, contained there also. Preferencing is an important skill to be across. You'll receive six preferences on your QTAC application. You can only receive one offer at a time based on your highest eligible preference. Preferences can be changed after the application is lodged and even after an offer, an offer is made. Each application comes with three free changes as part of the application fee. You can make more than three changes, but on the fourth, you'll have another fee to pay. It is recommended that you use all six, six options to improve your chances of receiving an offer. The first two options should be a desired courses of study. You may not believe that you will quite get the ATAR needed for admission, but put these options down anyway. You need to be real realistic, of course, but you can be optimistically realistic here. The third and fourth options should include backup courses. So courses that you would be happy to study if you don't receive either of your first two preferences. The last two options should be pathway courses such as diploma or less competitive courses, which will help you upgrade to the course you really want. If it is your goal to complete tertiary study, it is vital that you get into the system and work from there. Last year, we had 100% of Nudgee students receive an offer. Many received their highest preferences, but some didn't. But all the positions take the pathway of their choice. What do we mean when we say pathway courses? These can include less competitive degrees offered at different campuses or at a regional institution. There are also combined diploma degree qualifications, which means that you apply for the diploma, which has few or no prerequisites, and you are then guaranteed entry into the bachelor course if you pass the diploma. You can often receive credit for study completed and get two, two qualifications on graduation. It's very important that you get your preferencing correct. The QTAC system moves through your list of preferences from the top down. If it finds one that you are eligible for, it will stop there and not consider further preferences. If not, it will keep moving down your list until hopefully you will meet the merit and entry requirements and receive an offer. The example seen here has their preferred course as primary teaching. And this candidate prefers to study at USQ firstly and secondly at CQU. They may have family or friends they can live with in Toowoomba or Rockhampton or be willing to board. They are also willing to study in Brisbane as they have concluded QT and ACU respectively as their third and fourth choices. They have then been um, included pathway courses as their fifth and sixth preferences. This means they have ensured they will get an offer for a course, which at the very least will lead to their preferred course if they are successful in their studies. If you are interested in offers uh, with diff which have different dates or offer rounds, you need to order those preferences with the earliest offer rounds first. You can conditionally accept a course from an early offer round, then reorder your preferences to be considered for courses in future offer rounds. If no offer comes in the later rounds, then you get to keep your earliest offer. I will show you an example of this later in the presentation. Education Assistance Scheme, or EAS, helps if your studies have been negatively affected by circumstances beyond your control. When you apply through QTAC, you'll be asked if you wish to apply for assistance under this scheme. There are five categories. Financial hardship, home environment and responsibility, English language difficulties, personal illness or disability, and educational disruption. You'll be directed as to the documentation and process required. Each institution has its own adjustment schemes that are applied at the time of application. These can include regional adjustment factors, school relationships, subject schemes, elite athletes, introductory study equity, and if, if you identify as an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. You need to have the following information available to you before you start your QTAC application. These are your Louis. This number has been provided to you and is located on the front cover of your QTAC guide. Every year 12, student has been provided with one of these guides. 
If you can't find your lawyer, this is Skype in the Learning Centre, we'll be able to assist you. You will need your personal email address and not your school email address. This address, your school email address, becomes unavailable once you leave the college and QTAC may need to contact you. Details of any additional qualifications that you may have to support your application should be provided. You should also nominate a trusted person who can act on your behalf in the event that you need to. This should be a parent or carer. Due to privacy laws, information cannot be given to anyone who does not have authority on their account. There are fees for making a few tax applications. Please ensure you keep your receipt and make sure the payment has gone through once you have made it. If you have not paid, you will not get an offer and there's actually no way that we can fix that for you. On the date of your offer round, hopefully you will receive an email or an SMS. You need to log into my application and click on respond to offer in the time frame advised. If you don't do this, your offer will lapse. And again, there is no recourse for that. The options you will have available are accept or reject, which are outright responses, which will prevent the system from considering you for any other options. Some courses may also allow you to defer your course normally for up to 12 months. Information on courses, which may be deferred, deferred can be found on the QTAC website. The other option is to conditionally accept the offer, which means that the place is reserved for you. Preferences listed below this course on your application will no longer be considered. Preferences above this option are still on the table. So if you look at the following example, this student has received an offer on the 23rd of December for nursing at Griffith University, which is currently their first preference. They have decided that they also want to be considered for offers from ACU and QUT. Unless they change their preferences around, they will not be considered for these courses. So if they change their preferences around and put Griffith third, then ACU and QUT, they will be considered for the offer rounds in January. Offers below the Griffith course, which have, has been conditionally accepted, will not be considered in future rounds. If no further offer is received, the student still has the offer from Griffith University. In the next example, a student has included various options to study environmental science and received an offer for their third preference at uni. They can conditionally accept this and in the second round of offers still be considered for their first and second preferences as these are placed above preference for uni. I do check on your applications and contact you if anything looks incorrect or I think you're at risk of not receiving an offer. However, there are some issues beyond my control and you may not receive an offer for the following reasons. Firstly, you did not meet the entry requirements. For example, you applied for courses for which you did not have perhaps the correct prerequisite subjects or some other details were missing. Your ATAR wasn't high enough to get into any of your preferred courses. This is why you need to include a pathway course like a diploma as your last option. Additionally, uh, a reason could be that you did not pay your application fee. This is why you need to check this and keep your receipt. I can't see any information where the application hasn't been fully processed. Another uh, reason could be that you need to order your preferences correctly, as we've discussed. So incorrectly ordered preferences can mean no offers. The last reason could be that you applied for QTAC after the due date. While I send out reminders to apply to QTAC, it is up to you to ensure that you don't miss the date. There's nothing we can do if that actually happens. Other common mistakes are found you can include applying for the July intake for a course instead of February. You need to check the dates, uh, what you are wanting on your preferences. Applying to the wrong campus. So institutions can have campuses all over the state. Please ensure that you're applying to the right one. International students will receive any offers directly from the institution they apply to. You will still need to apply through QTAC, but the correspondence you receive regarding office offers will come directly from the university. You may therefore receive multiple offers. 
Please familiarise yourself with key dates as they relate to your causes of interest. Major offer rounds occur in December and January, but depending on your course, they could be earlier. You need to check. Basically, the earlier you get your application into QTAC, the better. Lastly, the contact details for QTAC are listed here for your information. Head to their website. Everything is there. It's a good idea to familiarise yourself with the information. If you run into difficulties or just have any questions, you can also contact me in the Learning and Teaching Office. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to get on to the next part of the evening where our representatives from the universities and from the Defence Force are going to speak with us. Um, our first presenter is Lauren Gilmore from the Australian Catholic University. Please welcome Lauren. Hey everyone, how are we tonight? That's good. Um, so now my name's Lauren, I study at ACU, the Australian Catholic University. Um, I'm a student at ACU, so I'm in my fourth year of a Bachelor of Nursing and a Bachelor of Business Administration. Uh, so tonight I'm going to be talking to you about our ACU Guarantee Program as well as some scholarships that we have, have available at the university. So on the screen here we have the courses that are available at our ACU Brisbane campus. Um, we've also got a new law degree that's been introduced into 2021, um, which is really exciting. So ACU Guarantee Program is a brand new program for 2021 and it's available for all year 12 students, so um, current year 12 students. And basically what this program is, is it is based on your year 11 results rather than your year 12 results, especially this year with everything happening due to COVID-19. This is really great if you haven't done so well in this year. Um, so essentially this is separately, it, this is completely separate to QTAC. Uh, you apply online on our website um, and you're able to apply for up to two different courses. Um, these applications open on the 3rd of August and then close on the 25th of September. And um, essentially you'll be, there's fortnightly offer rounds and they'll send you an email as to whether you got into your, um, your desired course. Um, again, you can apply through QTAC as well. This is just a specific ACU program that we have going on. So academic, uh, sorry, your applications aren't solely based on your academic work. So we also um, have a, sorry, we're committed to removing barriers to university participation. Uh, so we're gonna be asking questions like, do you live in a regional or rural area? Do you identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander? Um, do you have a strong connection with us as a school, which uh, you all do, which is great. Um, so these all contribute to your adjustment factors, which are essentially extra factors that are able to get you into the university and into your course. Um, we also have an optional uh, personal statement. So they talk about your impact through empathy, impact uh, over adversity and impact um, for family. And these contribute to that application as well. They are optional though, so you do not have to do them. So these are some of the frequently asked questions that we get in regards to this new guarantee program. Um, you are able to select up to two courses. You can defer to up to one year. Um, again, it's separate to QTAC, but you must also have completed year 12 completely. So you can't apply just because you've completed year 11. So scholarships, we have over 400 scholarships available at ACU. Um, one thing I will suggest is everyone should apply for a scholarship. Everyone should. Um, but there's so many scholarships that go unused every year just because no one applies for them. So 100% I recommend that for you. So these scholarships range from $1,000 up to $90,000 and they are attributed due to uh, merit scholarships or equity scholarships as well. And these, all the information for these scholarships are available online. Uh, so if you jump onto your website, you can see which ones you're eligible for and the application process, which might be through our website or through a, an alternate source. So one of our newest scholarships is our new Bachelor of Arts Western Civilization program. Now, unfortunately, this is only available at our North Sydney campus. Um, so for students who might be boarding, um, as you guys at the back are, um, you might be wanting to move to Sydney. So this is a new program uh, sponsored or sorry, funded by Ramsey Centre. And they've got 30 scholarships valued over $90,000 through the duration of your um, studies. And they also supply a return trip for an abroad studies as well. 
Um, with this one, you have to have a minimum selection rank of 92 based on your ATAR and adjustment factors. And also you'll be writing a essay on how should champions of Western civilization reply to its critics today. So that's 1,000 to 1,500 words there. So we also have merit scholarships available. So due to our new addition to law in Brisbane campus, we've got the Thomas More Law School Academic Excellence Scholarship. This one's valued up to $20,000 throughout your studies. Uh, with this one, you have to be a permanent resident or a holder of permanent, oh, sorry, a permanent uh, humanitarian visa. And you'll be studying our undergraduate law degree. This will be your first year of study that you'll be able to apply for this degree, um, for this scholarship, sorry. Another one is we have is the Catherine McCauley Scholarship, and this is available for all students, so any undergraduate except theology. Um, and that can be, that's valued up to $10,000 paid for the duration of your studies as well. We also have some scholarships specific to um, people who identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. Um, so our first one is our Mary McKillop Scholarship, which is valued at $4,000. Um, this is paid in one lump sum and is available each year to those students. We also have the Nano Nagel Scholarship, um, and this one's valued up to $10,000, and it's paid throughout the duration of your, uh, your studies there as well. So with these scholarships, you must be doing a full-time study load. Um, we also, oh, sorry, that's all the scholarships I have to talk about for you tonight. If you are, do have any questions, we have the Ask ACU page, so you can either jump online to our website um, or SMS and email as well. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, uh, Lauren. So next we have Corporal Stuart Jacobs, who's going to be speaking about the Defence Force, admissions criteria and scholarships available as well. Good evening, uh, ladies and gents. So we're gonna be talking about the different uh, entry pathways uh, for tertiary uh, within the ADF. Alrighty, so who are we? The ADF is made up of the three major services being Navy, Army and Air Force. We're both uh, full-time serving Army members. Uh, so you can see the Navy predominantly operate in maritime operations. Army is our land force and Air Force is our air capability. All right, some of our roles, um, we defend our nation, people, borders and our way of life, okay? Um, we help communities affected by conflict or natural disaster. Uh, and we support our allies through international operations. Uh, both domestically, uh, the greater Pacific region and overseas, obviously uh, uh, most people in the audience will be tracking uh, the current ongoing, ongoing conflicts. So I'll talk about some of the careers in the ADF, uh, aviation, business, admin and education, combat and security, which both myself and Corporal uh, Jacobs belong to, communications, information and uh, uh, intelligence, which is a large thing within the, within the Defence Force and also the civilian community. Uh, engineering, healthcare, science and chaplaincy, logistics, hospitality and support. The big one we're going to talk about tonight is officers and the management stream within the Australian Defence Force and we'll say trades and apprenticeships as well. Alrighty, so what you can all see now is the recruiting process. Okay, it's predominantly broken up into three major sections being your U session, your assessment day uh, for those looking at tertiary educational sponsorship, sponsorship through defence. You'll do an officer selection board uh, and everyone will fit in the test, all right? So the U session uh, comprises of an aptitude test and that's to gain uh, a tick in the box for eligibility to apply for service in the ADF, all right? Um, following that, you're gonna do an assessment day. That's gonna consist of a formal job interview, a medical examination and a psychological examination, all right? For those pursuing uh, either tertiary education through Australian Defence Force Academy or Defence University sponsorship, uh, you are going to conduct what we call an officer selection board. That's where we're going to determine your suitability and eligibility to serve as an officer uh, within the ADF. Everyone do a fitness test uh, and then you will appoint as an officer in either Navy, Army or Air Force and then pursue uh, further study concurrently. Uh, if you're looking at serving uh, at ADFA and getting a degree through the Australian Defence Force Academy uh, or looking at Defence University sponsorship, you'll have an alternate uh, uh, application running concurrently and you can see that in the turf on the right hand side there. Okay, so the avenues of entry for officers and management positions. So there's full time or reserves, which is the part time, 
uh, which is a really good program, especially for a university student. Uh, officer entry has the three different uh, avenues. Australian Defence Force Academy is the university where we send our officers uh, to do certain uh, degrees through the University of New South Wales. We also have the direct entry officer scheme, uh, which is where you'll join and just go straight in and become an officer within either one of the three services. And the last one, and we're gonna to touch on these, this tonight, is the Defence University Sponsorship Scheme. Now this scheme is quite a good one for um, the specialist sort of uh, degrees that are out there and that defence also needs within its, uh, within the, the, its community. Alrighty, so officer entry uh, is our leadership and management uh, coming straight off the street. Okay, you can see the minimum wage up there. Uh, on completion of training, $71,000 out the gate at an absolute minimum, and that's going to increase over time. All right. As far as education is concerned, so for entry into ADFA, being the Australian Defence Force Academy, we need a minimum of Year 12 English and three other ATAR subjects. All right. Um, you have to be 16 and a half to apply for most roles within the ADF for ADFA 16. Rightio. So at the commencement of Year 11, you can apply for service get all your application and assessments completed, uh, align those subjects and that ATAR that you, need to, uh, that you need to achieve in order to gain entry. That way you have uh, that tertiary pathway waiting for you when you complete year 12. So I'll now touch on the Australian Defence Force Academy uh, for the officer entry, nationally recognised degrees through, as I stated before, the University of New South Wales. So Bachelor of Arts, Business, Engineering, Computing and Cybersecurity is one of the newer degrees that they've just brought in, science and also technology. So generally for the student to teacher ratio, it's around about one to 10, can be a little bit more just depending on the size of the class it's going through. All your university fees are covered. You do not pay a cent for any of your university fees. You're also guaranteed a job at the other end. So if you go in and you do a uh, engineering degree, you'll then go on and you can become a mine warfare officer, which is the person who sails the ship whilst the captain's not in the wheelhouse. Uh, guaranteed a, a job, as I said, and whilst you're there, you're also earning between forty to fifty-seven thousand dollars a year, um, and that includes. Uh, well, that is dependent on what uh, phase you are at in regards to your training uh, or your degree. Now, that there as well does not include, uh, or sorry, does include with it free medical, free dental, all of your sporting uh, and accommodation covered all of your food covered, all your uniforms, everything else is given to you whilst you're at the Australian Defence Force Academy. <clears throat> Alrighty, so the second thing we're gonna to touch on is the Defence University Sponsorship. So this is predominantly for uh, those specialist degrees or those specialty service officers uh, that we don't train internally at the Australian Defence Force Academy. Uh, predominantly, certain engineering uh, streams, mainly mechatronics and stuff like that, um, nursing for our nursing officers and uh, med as well, okay? Uh, for our doctors within defence. So you're going to study at the uni of your choice, all right? So for example, you want to go to UQ and study medicine, all right? You gain entry, you complete 12 months or six to 12 months of study there, show that you're passing, uh, come to us with your transcripts and say, hey, I'm doing really well. Uh, and then we will consider sponsoring the remainder of your degree. So we'll pick up all the fees, we'll pay you a wage, all right? Between $47,000 and $65,000, okay? Uh, and we're going to cover you as you uh, as if you were a full-time serving defence member. All right. So instead of having to juggle study and work externally, uh, you're going to get a wage and everything covered, so you can focus on your studies with a guaranteed job at the end of the tunnel. Uh, you're going to get subsidised accommodation and all those benefits that come with uh, service in the ADF. Uh, the key point with that, on completion of your degree, uh, you're going to give back the term of your degree plus one year uh, in service with the ADF. So I'll just now touch on the, uh, the actual officer training and how long it'll take you to become an officer or a qualified officer. So Navy down at HMAS Creswell and Jarvis Bay, and that's for 22 weeks uh, pre adfa And then Army is at the Royal Military College down in uh, Canberra. And it is for 18 months if you're doing the direct entry officer. But if you're going through ADFA or the DUS program, it is only 12 months. And Air Force, you'll go to the Officer Training School at East Sale um, and complete 18 weeks post ADFA once you've finished your university degree. Great. That's pretty much it, team. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, you can see the resources there 
Obviously, all the social media platforms, if you want more information, uh, look at the fence jobs. That has a specific page that goes through each entry pathway so you can see what ATAR aligns uh, to what degree you want to pursue, as well as more information uh, on Defence University sponsorship. Thanks, Ben. Thank you very much. It's very remiss of me not to introduce as well as um, Corporal Jacobs, Warrant Officer Ballard Corporal as well, so sorry about that. Um, next on our agenda, we have Sean Johnson from Bond University, who's going to be talking about their particular um, array of admissions procedures and scholarships as well. So please make Sean welcome. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Good out there? I can't see a darn thing. So just gonna wave to you at home. Hello out there, all right. So guys, I'm a bit of a talker, so I'm gonna try to keep this 10 minutes. And I know it gets exciting. I am a coach at Bond University, so sometimes you're gonna hear that in my voice. Today, I'll probably enthuse a little bit of motivation and excitement. Maybe you won't feel it, but hopefully you do. But tonight's awesome. I know sometimes you sit there and go, man, I'm bored, or I'll talk to my friend, and I get you. But tonight could be the reason one of you decide to go to uni. And it could be the reason you then go find the job that saves multiple people or makes $2 million a year. I don't know what it is. But there's a reason that we're all here. We all want you. We're all here recruiting every single one of you because we believe in what you're doing out there, okay? So I know I'm coming at you, but this is what I do, guys, okay? I am excited about this stuff. I think this stuff is awesome, and I also think that you can get so much value from it, okay? I'm off my high horse. I'm coming back down, all right? So I'm from Bond University. I am a domestic regional manager. So what I do is I help you guys with this journey to finding university. Typically, it's Bond. I don't normally help you go to Griffith. But if you have questions, I know Gabby quite well, so I'm happy to pass her your way or pass you her way. All right. But guys, specifically tonight, I'm going to do admissions and scholarships, and I'll do my best because, again, I only have 10 minutes, and I can see my – I'm already getting excited. I'm in the lights. It's already happening, okay? So good things for you year 12s. All right. We know, as we were already talking, a lot of stuff is impacted. We require for admissions at Bond your term one and term two of year 11 and term one of year 12. We can base your admission on those scores. We can already get you an offer right now. You could be sitting there going, I already got a university offer. And I know some of you are athletes out there and you're going, Sean, I don't need this stuff. I'm gonna be a professional footy player. That is awesome and I do believe that. But when you're 45 and all you did was play footy, make sure there's something else there. Okay, that's all I'll say. I played sports as well. Just make sure you have something else behind you. And that's where this other stuff comes in. Even if it doesn't happen till later on, know what your options are, defense sports. Griffith, ACU, CQ, all these places want to help you guys, okay? So, moving right along. This will talk to you a little, about, a little bit about what I, I just said, but our admissions process at Bond goes directly through our university. So, unfortunately or fortunately, you're dealing with me the whole time, okay? So, if you have questions on where you're at, that's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah, buddy, okay? So, if you guys have questions about this stuff, though, you can pick up the phone and call me or call Ryan, my colleague. We are there to support the Brisbane schools and coming out here as well, okay? So tonight, after you hear me, you're going to go, oh, man, I'm going to Bond, all right? You will go to apply.bond.edu.au. You can make your application directly to us, okay? I know there's some viewers out there that are going to be applying for medicine. That goes specifically through QTAC, and fellas, you guys also might be applying for medicine. That specific program does go through QTAC, but for your bachelor's degrees coming up for January, that is a direct application to Bond University, okay? Cool, got that out of the way. Moving forward. All right, I'm gonna try to go through a little bit about Bond, but you guys already love it. I can see those faces out there. No, okay, all right, it's okay. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to get you a bit more on that, all right? We will do a scholarships overview. I won't do the workshop tonight, but I am gonna help you out. There is a possibility and you have had a student from this school get a scholarship, okay? If you get a 50% scholarship at Bond, it's worth $50,000. I know, we're throwing numbers out there, but if you get a 100% scholarship, yeah, you do the math, $100,000. I mean, it, it feels good, I know. And not everybody is going to get that, but I mean, come on. You gotta be excited about these things to want to apply, all right? So yes, I am trying to enthuse some excitement out there. All right, so workshop activities, and I'll give you some next steps, all right. Blowing through this. All right. So why bond? Well, we are a Gold Coast University, so we do have that lifestyle. Okay. So if, if you look at that right there, this is where you will go to school. All right. Now, some of those tall buildings, we do take borders. So we do have accommodation on campus, which I love because that is where, and gentlemen here, I'm, I hope you feel this. This is where you build that community. 
It's important, man. I'm telling you, those, those guys you're with or the people you go to school with now, they will be your best. I'm telling you, your best friends to come. You will know these guys for a long time, all right? In a good way, I swear. But this is where we have that community feel as well, all right? Moving right along, I don't want to bore you with stats, but we got stats too, okay? We have been rated for 14 years in a row as, you know, a really nice place for students to go. We care about you guys. We want you to enjoy your, your university and what you're doing there, okay? I won't bore you with stats though, because that's not about tonight. Another reason students a lot of times like Bond, even though that doesn't fit up there, is we have an accelerated degree. All right, so you can do a standard Bachelor of Business in two years, but please do not select Bond because it's short. Okay, you select it because we are there with you the entire step of the way. Unfortunately, again, you're going to see me on campus when you're in your second semester and we're going to be high fiving. All right, even if you don't want to, I'm still coming at it. All right, okay, moving right along. Okay, so I know I flew over some of like why you go to Bond, what you want to do, but guys, please understand I am more than happy to cover the whole thing. I would love for each and every one of you to come to the campus because I will walk you around and show you the glory. All right, but Done with admissions, done with telling you why. Let's talk about scholarships. Okay, so I have all the scholarships that we offer listed on three pages. The three I do want to really cover is the Vice Chancellor Elite, the one on, on the top, Excellence and Leadership. These are our most popular and usually the ones we give the most out of. Now, if you read across the top there, there's some things you need to do. If you want to be a Vice Chancellor Scholar, you gotta make a video, okay? You gotta talk to us about why, all right? We want to, and all of these universities, when you're applying for scholarships, have a reason. Believe me, I agree, apply for all of them, but have some passion behind it. You're going to be an ambassador for one of us. We're going to be, yes, John, go out, talk about Bond because you got a scholarship and you love this place. This is what I, we want you guys to have passion behind why you're studying and what you want to do out there, okay? And even if it is sport, have some passion why you want to be a great athlete because it makes a lot of money, because it's cool, because it's, it's cool amongst your friends. Like, what are the reasons behind why you wake up and why you go do? Because a lot of you go out and do, all right? So a lot of these scholarship applications are gonna ask you those questions. What do you wanna do? Why do you wanna do that? What do you wanna study? What are you going to change? And how is that actually going to impact someone outside of yourself? And that's one thing you always have to think about. How is it bigger? How do you make your, your cause bigger, all right? Moving right along. So we do have those sports scholarships as well. We, do, we have a John Hills Rugby Scholarship, we have an AFL Scholarship, we have a Swimming Scholarship, and we have an ADCO Sports Scholarship for any athletes that are kind of competing at a national level, all right? So I would be happy to you know, cover all of those with you as well, but I just want you guys to know we do cover academic side and we do have a sports scholarship and we do love our athletics, very similar to how I see you love it out here. Are those new sports fields going on out there? Yeah, I can feel it too. That's what I'm talking about, okay. So moving right along, those are sports scholarships. Um, here are the other scholarships. So we do offer some things for some students that might be, we have a transformer program. If you're sitting there going, I got a business idea and it's good. We look for students like you to come study and bring that business to life. We'll put resources behind you and we'll give you a scholarship to do it. Okay. So just some overview. I can't cover everything. Clearly we only have 10 minutes. And I'm sure I'm already over that. So quick on summary of achievements. Guys, you should start making this now if you don't already have one. It's similar to your sporting resume. Start mapping it out. You guys have all done some awesome things. Start getting it on paper. Don't get to the point to go, what have I done, mom? Okay, you guys know. Start checking the things out. Have you, have you been a leader out there? Have you volunteered? Are you a captain on your team? Are you coaching younger students? What's going on out there? Okay, we want to see your summary of achievements. It's a lot like your resume. All right, there is two essays involved. There will be questions, and so... Again, I don't have time to go through what to do, but I will, I will make sure that we send out a question and example answer so you guys have that at your disposal. But again, happy to get on a Zoom with you if you need some help. There's two questions for excellence and, and, and vice chancellors there, okay? And again, these questions are specifically about what you are going to do with your academics and how that is actually going to impact further. We wanna know what you're passionate about, all right? So a few tips on kind of the essay questions. Where am I at? Oh, I'm probably over time. All right, a few tips on the essay questions. You know, be analytical with your thinking, structure your writing, don't do it the last moment, prepare. It's everything you're gonna hear tonight. But guys, if any of these schools touch something that you're getting the feels and you're going, I wanna go there, put some effort into it. I swear to you, it's hard to make $50,000 as a high school student in a year, 
okay? If you can get a scholarship for that, that is amazing. And you do it by maybe one week of work, okay? And all the work you did before to lead up to that, but you know what I'm saying, okay? So LinkedIn profiles are great. Um, here's tips from a student, but I think I'm going to kind of skip, skip to key dates really quick. So going back to scholarships, our applications are open now. So apply.bond.edu.a, you can apply for bond. Once you apply for bond, you can immediately go in and apply for scholarships. It's one application for scholarships. You tick all the boxes that apply. Even if you get to that scholarship and go, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is where, again, we are here to help you guys. We're happy to walk you through and do what we need to, okay? So there's some key dates there. We'll make sure we send those. Next steps, we do have accommodation. I'm gonna get off the stage. There's my information, guys. If we can help at all, we'll be here. We have some questions, panels, things like that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sean. Don't know about you guys, but I'm excited after hearing that. <laughs> okay, so now I'd like to introduce Gabby Brown. Thank you, boys. Uh, from Griffith University. So please make Gabby welcome. Hi guys, um, Sean is always a very tough act to follow, so I'm going to try my very best. Um, my name is Gabby and I work in the Future Students team at Griffiths. Um, so this evening I'm just going to go over a few of our, our big scholarships, our main scholarships. Uh, but firstly, we'll just go through a little bit about Griffith University. Um, so essentially, we are quite a large uni. We have over 50,000 students who study with us across six different campuses. Uh, we also have a really large offering. We have over 200 different degrees on offer. So if you can think of studying it, we most probably do offer it. Uh, and a bit about where we're located. Uh, so we're also located on the Gold Coast. It's actually our largest campus down there, uh, right next to the Gold Coast University Hospital. We also have a Lozen campus, which is a smaller community-based campus with a few thousand students. Uh, we have our Nathan campus, which is our second largest campus. Uh, and we also have our South Bank and our Macrovac campuses. So a little bit about our campuses is actually may decide as to where you go, uh, depending on what you'd like to study. So if you're looking at medicine or dentistry, you'll probably head down the Gold Coast. Uh, but if you're thinking of doing something creative like music or performing arts, you'll head to our South Bank campus. Just touch on the study areas. As you can see, we have quite a number of study areas. I won't go through them all this evening. They'll be very boring. Um, but if you do have any more questions, jump on our degree finder on our website and you can get all the information that you need. So on to the scholarships. We have over 600 scholarships on offer. So a very comprehensive range for just about everything. Uh, it is one application for multiple scholarships. That's the key thing here. You don't need to do multiple applications. It's actually just one. And that can put you in the running for many scholarships at one time. They are quite competitive. You will need to stand out, but I will go through some tips on how you can make your scholarship application great. And sometimes they're more than just financial support. They may be including some sort of memberships uh, to some sort of colleges that we have on offer, but I will talk about that also. And something to point out is you can actually achieve multiple scholarships. So you may be a scholarship holder for an academic scholarship, but you can also get an accommodation scholarship for all you boarders looking at moving away. Uh, you may be eligible for both. So something to know that you can actually gain quite amount of money um, just by putting that application in. So the different categories we have, number one, academic. Uh, we have our accommodation scholarships, like I mentioned. We have equity. So if you have had a tough time financially this year, if you've had an illness, any of those EAS categories, uh, what we have scholarships for. Uh, First Peoples, if you're Indigenous or Torres Strait Islander, sport, and also study area specific. We have ones for our business students and for our med medicine students and so on and so forth. How do you find them? It's all on our website. So jump on at griffith.edu.au forward slash scholarships. And that one application is just through the website. So you can actually go through, use those drop down boxes and do a search. And you can actually put in that you're a high school student and you're interested in sport and everything that we have that could be applicable will come up and you can have a look through. So I'm just gonna go through some of our larger scholarships for you now. So our premier academic scholarship is our Dean Sir Samuel Griffith and our Sir Samuel Griffith scholarships. So these ones are very comprehensive, very generous, uh, and are generally for students who display academic excellence and also have showed leadership uh, involvement, community engagement, things like that. So some of the eligibility criteria is that you do achieve quite a high ATAR. We're looking at those students uh, that are 96 ATAR and above in incorporated with that leadership experience. 
And from the terms and conditions, we want to make sure that you have Griffith as either your first or second preference on QTAC. Now, the money, the important stuff. So if you achieve a high ATAR and you get one of our Dean Sosama Griffith scholarships, you're looking at up to $60,000 to support you in your study. So that's $6,000 per trimester that you are enrolled with us. And you'll also get Honours College membership, which is like an enrichment program for our high achieving students, where you can get uh, industry mentors, leadership experience, so on and so forth. Uh, then we also have our Sir Samuel Griffith scholarships. Those ones are up to $24,000, it rounds out about $3,000 a trimester. And once again, Honours College memberships. So that's a really fantastic scholarship. Um, once again, just got to get that application in. Now, Chancellor Scholarship is a great one as well. So this one is looking at students who may have experienced some sort of financial hardship or educational disadvantage over the last year or so. Um, and that's looked to really impact their ability to achieve. So you're looking at $22,000 in value if you are someone who fits in the accommodation category, so you are moving away, uh, and $11,000 in value for the education costs. So for to be eligible for this one, essentially Australian citizen, permanent resident, uh, humanitarian visa holder, uh, and have experienced some sort of educational disadvantage, um, essentially it's means tested, and they would go through that in your application. Now looking at our sports scholarship, so this essentially uh, we're looking at students who are performing at the, the national to international level in their chosen sport. Uh, and essentially this scholarship is to help those students be able to balance their academic uh, commitments with their sporting commitments. So a full sports scholarship with us is a value of $28,000. We have a development scholarship for those up and coming athletes, which is arranged about $5,000. Um, so once again, you must just be at a national international level in your chosen sport of which we deem is a sport uh, by the AIS. Now, something I want to mention is external scholarships. So these ones that aren't offered by Griffith University or by Bond or UQ, there are so many scholarships out there that are just there for students going to university in, in general. So these might be uh, given out by government, by industry, by certain non-for-profits or foundations. Uh, they may have a wide range of requirements. So essentially, you just need to go on, have a look, do a bit of a Google search, and they're all out there. Once again, check the closing dates. They can be competitive as well, but really great way to find some extra money uh, in conjunction with applying for the university scholarships. So how to apply, I've gone through it, but essentially one application on our website, they are open right now and they go through, they do have some different closing dates. So if you're looking at our sporting scholarships, you're looking around a November close date, uh, the Sir Samuel Griffiths around a December closing date. But we always say when you're doing your QTech application, do it at the same time where you've got this wonderful support of your school here, you may as well get it done. Um, and on to some top tips. So. You will have to write some essays. You will have to get some letters of reference. There is some things you will need to do to get this money. So have a bit of a think, start brainstorming. Look at and think about career goals. Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in the future? Also think about the written application. You do need to write these and you do need to have grammar and spell check and make sure that it's written perfectly because we always see students who write the best applications are the ones who get the scholarship. So make sure you get mum, dad, teachers, someone to proofread it for you. Contact details, really important. Don't use your school email address, guys. Use your personal email address because as I said before in the presentation, your school email will deactivate. So if you get a scholarship, you want to be able to reply and you want to get that email. Referees as well, letters of reference. They might be a sporting coach, a principal, a school teacher, a church leader. Make sure that you tell them that you're applying and make sure you give them that heads up and get in there nice and early so that they have time to write a letter for you or just so they're aware. And supporting documents. So I've mentioned it, but equity statements. So you might need something from Centrelink if you've had a tough time financially. Uh, any other supporting documents. So you might have some school awards that you've won. You might hold a membership to association. Start getting that stuff together. Letters of recommendation I've mentioned, but once again, get in touch with those people. And you need to actually get any documents you submit certified. So you may need to see a justice of the peace. So once again, get on that nice and early. So start exploring right now. You guys have turned up tonight. It's awesome. So you know that you're already on your way to thinking about applying for scholarships. Uh, look into the open closing dates. Like I said, they can vary from all the different unis. Research those external ones. Check the terms and conditions, especially about preferencing, guys. You might need to be in the first or second preference to be eligible. 
start that application now. And the one thing I wanna let you guys know, if you don't get a scholarship straight out of school, it's really not the end of the world. You can actually keep applying year on year, I'm sure with all of us, uh, and you can keep and try and get those scholarships as you continue through your studies. Um, and start looking into those extracurricular activities. If anyone here isn't in grade 12 or you know, has siblings or anything, um, you can start thinking about extra things that you can do now, or even if you are in year 12, to start bolstering those scholarship applications. It might be volunteering somewhere on the weekends. Um, you can really start looking into that right now. That's it from me. If you do have any further questions, feel free to email us. Um, you can catch my team there. Um, but thanks so much and all the best for year 12, guys. Thank you so much, Gabby. Uh, now we've got Madison Jensen from QUT just to give us some information on their scholarship programs. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name's Maddie and I'm from QUT, so the Queensland University of Technology and I'm from the student recruitment team there. So we are the university for the real world, but what does that actually mean? It means that we like to give our students a practical experience to support the learning. So our, occup um, so our podiatry students are working with real life patients under supervision. Our exercise students, our exercise science students are working with elite sporting teams and coaches and biomechanists. So we like to offer our students that real practical experience. We offer many different courses. Um, they're quite flexible. We even have a double degree option as well. Um, if you're a little bit unsure of what you want to study, hop online, have a look at what we do offer. You can see on the screens um, the areas of study that we offer. We also have our Match My Skills quiz. So this is a really cool quiz where you can go online, answer a few questions of your interests, your dislikes, and it'll automatically generate a few um, degrees at QUT that you might not have considered. Um, and sorry, <laughs> at QUT, we have assumed knowledge versus our pre other like prerequisites. So what that means is that you don't have to do certain subjects at high school to gain entry into QUT. So that's for most of our degrees. So for instance, one of the degrees that does have a prerequisite with us are our education degrees. Um, if you haven't studied this subject before in high school, we do have a wide range of bridging programs as well. Something important to mention, uh, mention is that we don't have any early um, entry programs at QUT, but we do have the QUT offer guarantee. So what that is, is that you can gain entry into a wide range of our courses with an ATAR of 87 or above, um, or, or our more competitive courses at an ATAR of 93. So, um, so a big important thing is what has changed in light of COVID and what's changed for our entry into 2021. So I believe we're having some technical errors. Um, basically that we are now offering um, a vet, we are now accepting a vet qualification into, into QUT um, without having an ATAR. Um, previously we did not, um, but this is only for entry into 2021. We have a number of admissions pathways and entry schemes, um, and one of them is a centralised assessment selection progr uh, program, and that is for our Indigenous students. So this is a separate pathway for these students where they can come onto campus, submit an application, sit an interview, um, and it's based on the interview and the application, not so much the ATAR and finishing Year 12. So that's an awesome opportunity that we do offer. We also have selection rank adjustment schemes for our elite athletes, certain year 12 subjects, and any students that have um, experienced any educational um, disadvantage. Now, I'd also like to encourage every student to apply for scholarships. We have many different scholarships in very, um, various different areas. We have the QUT Excellence Scholarships and they're um, for the students that are aiming for ATARs in the high 90s. Um, and these are valued at $30,000. We have 90, nine zero of these to give away. Um, we also have um, other scholarships valued at $10,000 and we've got 15 of these to give away. We have a creative industry scholarship um, uh, valued at 10,000 and also $30,000. And this is based um, specifically on the audition portfolio or interview process, not on the ATAR you get. You don't have to apply for this one. Um, you will be told if you've been selected by our panel of judges. 
We also have various sports scholarships um, and these are available to athletes across all different levels from aspiring to elite to international athletes and we've got a wide range of values across those. Um, if you're awarded any of our scholarships, you will gain entry into our College of Excellence. Um, and this College of Excellence will um, unite other like-minded students and open up a door of many more opportunities as well. I would also like to um, promote our virtual open day to everyone. Um, and due to COVID-19, it will be online, but it is supposed to be a really awesome event. It's held over two days, the 29th and 30th of August. Um, you can register online now for the complete event program and also to win a MacBook Air as well. You'll be able to talk to students, um, some of our excellent teaching staff, um, and many different other forms of people at QUT. If you'd like to stay connected with us, you can see the various ways you can keep in touch. Um, something important to mention is go onto your website, start uh, onto our website, start doing your research, um, and you can even download our welcome guide, which is our undergraduate guide of all the different courses we offer. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Madison. So our last presenter from the universities uh, is going to be Jaden Wiedemann from UQ. So please make him welcome. Thank you. All right, good evening. So yes, my name is Jaden. I am from the schools team at University of Queensland. Uh, so we are two campuses here in Brisbane, St. Lucia and Hurston, crossroad from the Echo Showgrounds. We also do have our Gatton campus. So on your way to Toowoomba, uh, you'd pass our Gatton campus. So if you're looking at animal studies, vet science, agriculture, that's where you'd be studying. So thanks for coming along tonight, or virtually. Uh, one thing I do want to address, we have been getting lots of questions regarding COVID when it comes to admissions for 2021. Every university is going to be a bit different, but University of Queensland, we will still be looking at ATAR results for year 12. Uh, I know some unis are coming out looking at year 11 results or et cetera. Uh, so from our side of things, we are still looking at year 12 ATAR results. So just a heads up on that one. Any updates throughout the year, uh, we will be sure to let you know, but it sure has been an interesting one. Okay, so I guess I try to repeat too much of what's already been spoken. But as you guys know, there's plenty of scholarships around, plenty of universities to choose from. So I guess the key thing to do is really apply. Um, every year, there's scholarships which go unclaimed because no one applies for it. Yes, those big ones, everyone's going for those big ones, applying, applying, applying. But even if you see one, so say like $2,000, Put your name down. If you're eligible for our scholarship, apply. Because uh, we have scholarships sit there because no one applies for it. So when it does come to scholarship time, um, check the eligibility. If you're eligible, apply because you can actually hold multiple scholarships at one time at University of Queensland, okay? There is one misconception that you do have to be an ATAR 99 student to get a scholarship. That was my preconception. I never applied for a scholarship myself because I just assumed that you had to be that high ranking student. All my mates got scholarships. They weren't ATAR 99 students but they gave it a go because there are scholarships out there. There's faculty scholarships, accommodation scholarships, there's rugby scholarships, sporting scholarships. So the list goes on. Uh, when it comes to University of Queensland, we have simplified our website a bit. And all it is, is really just type into Google UQ scholarships, our page will pop up and you can filter what you're looking for, okay? Our key scholarship season does start in August. Uh, and normally most scholarships close around end of October, mid November. So that's for your key academic and sporting scholarships. But as I said before, there is so much more than that, okay? When it comes to academic scholarships, these are our three main scholarships, okay? Biggest one we do have is UQ Vice Chancellor Scholarship, okay? So you're probably sitting there looking at those ATARs going, damn, that's quite high, okay? As I said before, academic scholarships, yes, they are competitive, uh, but there's so much more. So our UQ Vice Chancellor Scholarship, students who receive an ATAR of 99.5 or higher, uh, will get a UQ Vice Chancellor Scholarship, okay? Uh, when you are applying for University of Queensland scholarships, as long as your preference is first or second for UQ, you're in the running for UQ scholarship, okay? When it comes to UQ excellence and UQ merit scholarships, what we're looking for, yes, we are looking for your academic achievement. Uh, it does vary, as you can see on the screen there, but we are also looking at your community engagement, your leadership, your academic achievements, okay? When it does come to these achievements, we are looking at what you've done in year 11 and year 12, okay? If your spelling be in year eight, not really going to cut it, but it's more those recent relevant scholarship uh, achievements. When it does come to those achievements, you might have volunteered somewhere for a few weeks or et cetera, but don't have any supporting documentation, a letterhead, a supervisor or someone can write on letterhead 
you know, such and such volunteered of us during this certain period of time and assisted with bam, 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 okay? On a letterhead, things like that. So you may not have a certificate for some things. So think outside the box, see how you can kind of gather that supporting documentation. So these academic scholarships, they do open in August and they do close November 20. So you've got a few months. Uh, this scholarship application is one scholarship application for academic scholarships, okay? Faculty scholarships, yes, they are separate applications, but for these academic ones, it's one application. We're going to ask for your personal details, and then we're going to ask for your top achievements when it comes to leadership, community engagement, academic achievement. So you can actually start now by gathering that supporting documentation. Have it saved on your desktop. So when those applications do open, it's just bam, 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 upload, okay? One of our ambassadors got the vice chancellor scholarship. It took him 20 minutes. He got $60,000, all right? Best 60 grand he made in 20 minutes. So as you can see, those academic scholarships are quite easy to put in. There's some key dates, as you can see. Um, so August 3rd, they do open, and November 20 is when they close for the academic ones. Okay, eligibility, uh, if there's any international students here, as long as you've done high school in year 11 and 12 here in Australia, you are eligible for a scholarship, okay? Tips for submitting, so here's a few tips. So when it does come to those community engagement ones, as I said before, the duration of that community engagement is a key thing which we're looking for, okay? Volunteering for one day is great, but it's those ones that really stand if you've done it for a few weeks or over a longer period of time, it does stand out. So make sure you state the duration of that community engagement. Academic achievements, the level of achievement, the first, second or third, um, as well as the level of competition. Was it state, was it national? Okay, so a few examples. Uh, as I said before, it's normally your top 10 achievements what we're looking for. Um, so think outside the box as well. We have so many students who apply, which are involved in so much cool stuff that they just don't put it on. Um, so. Just uh, start thinking about that now. Now, when it does come to, you're not gonna be able to see that, that's quite small, that text, but there's a few examples. Uh, Duke of Edinburgh, if you have done the Duke of Edinburgh, we are looking at gold level only, surf life saving, uh, bronze medallion, things like that are some examples. If you've attended a conference or a, as part of the school, um, that's also included as well. So this will be on the slides for afterwards. Very quickly, I will mention some of the key faculty scholarships. Uh, a UQ Ramsey undergraduate scholarship, brand new scholarship, you are looking at $30,000 for up to five and a half uh, years each year. So $30,000 every year, so the maximum you can get is about $150,000. Some of the students who received this scholarship this year are having saving for home deposits as we speak. So that's one good thing about scholarships, that money goes straight into your bank account, all right? We're gonna ask you your bank details, all right? First half of the year, we'll give you half, second half of the year, we'll give you the second half. Repeats in the following year. Okay, and that's a great thing. If you want to go, you know, traveling around Australia, if you want to put on your tuition fees, if you want to just use it so you don't have to work part time, that's the great thing about scholarships. Okay, this one here, if you're looking at studying a Bachelor of Western uh, Humanities, majoring in Western Civilization, or the dual degree with law, you would be eligible for this one. Applications are currently open, they do close August 10. So if you are interested in that humanities space, check it out. Uh, business, every faculty has their own scholarships. All right, we've got an economic scholarship. You're looking at economics as a scholarship there, which will pay for your whole tuition, all right? How cool would that be having no hex help? Hex debt. Engineering, you've got the Leverest one, $10,000 a year, okay? I'm not gonna go through every single scholarship, but as you can see, there's so much more than those academic ones. Very quickly, sporting. Uh, if you've represented state and national, highly recommend uh, checking out the sporting scholarships, okay? Love our sports at UQ. Uh, we also have the UQ rugby team who have their own scholarships as well. For the rugby boys here, highly recommend checking them out. Uh, how do sporting scholarships work? We set a bar. Everyone who's achieving above that bar will really get a sporting scholarship. The price does vary depending on how many people apply and every sport is weighted differently, okay? So UQ Sport, it's all, all featured on our scholarship website. Uh, and that's basically it. I don't wanna bore you too much regarding all the faculty stuff, but as I said, if you're looking at uh, staying on college, the accommodation providers at UQ at St. Lucia there, have their own range of scholarships, which you can apply for directly on their website, okay? So they can pay for half a year, sometimes a year of accommodation, which comes in handy. So any questions, there's the scholarships number. Uh, we've also got an email address there as well, but happy to answer any questions afterwards. Thanks very much, everyone, and good luck. Thank you so much, Jaden. So the message we're consistently hearing is that you should be putting in the effort to apply for a scholarship. So if in doubt, I think the answer is apply. Um, it does take some effort, it does take some organisation, but obviously very well worth the effort as we can tell from our presenters tonight. I'd like to thank you all very much for your contribution this evening. Uh, the last session that we're going to be um, 
facilitating is the panel question and answer session. So previously I did ask for questions from the community, mums and dads and students, and I have got a list here that we can start with, and I believe some have come through on the live stream as well. So I'll direct this to the panel. The first question um, is really for UQ and QUT, and I believe Madison, you may have addressed this partially in, in your uh, presentation anyway. Will there be any early entry options to courses available for students this year, given the special circumstances? Madison, did you want to say something? Yeah. So for QT, um, there won't be any early entry options either. But as I said before, we have the QT offer guide. So you will know you'll have been made an offer in your course um, to attend the panel session. But no early. And I've had this question quite a lot. Um, is it likely that the entry point to most courses will be lower than last year as a result of COVID? And I guess as a result of our international students not necessarily being able to return to um, university. Anyone like to take that, Jaden, perhaps? It's a bit of a tricky one. Um, I guess discussions are being made with international students to return to CFCs at the moment, uh, what kind of national steps we're taking. I myself can't speak for each of the team, so I can't give that certainty on that, even though the discussions are still happening. Um, it's a bit of a tricky one, um, yeah. so I can't give a clear answer. And as all I can say, discussions are currently happening. And I guess it's sort of like demand and supply normally, it depends on how many people are applying for which courses and what the actual ATAR entry point will be. So we can't take anything for granted, boys. You're still gonna do some really good hard study. Um, next question, what UCAT score would students normally need to be considered for Bachelor of Medicine at say UQ, Griffith or Bond? Does anyone wanna have a go at that? I'll jump in, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, team. <Yes>. All right. <laughs> No, so the, the bond medicine program, um, going back to, you do apply to the QCAT for the first instance with your grade, but with regard to UCAT, we don't require a UCAT. We have our own internal process where essentially you come and you do your psychometric program. Once you get past the academic round, you move on to a psychometric evaluation, then a psychometric evaluation, and then move on to on-campus panel interviews. That's essentially how our process is. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Gabby? Okay, and yep. Ours is 97. <laughs> Not that it's a competition or anything. Um, Jaden? So, yes, we do accept UCAT. Any boys with UCAT issues? Yeah. Awesome. It's, as you guys know, it's a bit of an unusual test. So, yes, the thresholds are changing a little bit. Based on last year's cohort, it's the first UCAT year. Uh, for those who gained a spot in our Doctor of Medicine, we do take the aggregate score from section 1-4 for UCAT, and that was 28.70 based on last year's cohort. For students who applied for a Doctor of Medicine bonded position, it was 2800 for the UCAT score. So every year it does change based on last year's cohort, that's the required for bonded entry. Mm -hmm. So those who did see UCAT this year, um, we'll get your UCAT score in September if you applied for UQ, uh, and then October will be shortlisted students to see by the end of the year. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, one for our Defence Force crew. How rigorous are the fitness health tests for ADFA? Have the results been affected at all given the COVID issue and the spike in mental health issues? Yeah, so I can talk about that. Um, I suppose we, we can't really go into too much detail regarding the, the medical side of it. Um, I will just reiterate every candidate applying for service in the ADF um, is required to undergo a medical examination and psychological examination. Um, to determine medical and psychological suitability for service in ADF. Yeah. If there are any concerns or questions at that stage, you can engage, engage the liaison with our medical staff as part of the application. As far as fitness is concerned, obviously a, a key cornerstone of service in the ADF is your physical strength, conditioning and your fitness. 
uh, and that is uh, appropriately in your portfolio. So it would be done into something like a combat role. If you prove combat engineer, armored core post study, uh, then you definitely need to have a firm grasp on your strength conditioning and your fitness um, before going into one of those careers. Um, and in addition to that, I suppose everyone needs to pass what we call a pre entry fitness assessment uh, before you can get on a bus and spear away with, uh, to do your respective training and basic lessons. Um, everyone is required to pass that baseline standard. That standard has not changed uh, compared to pre COVID. So, situation no change regarding uh, physical fitness standards for schools. Thank you. Um, another question, uh, are there any plans to change how courses are delivered due to COVID? That is, are more courses going to be delivered online rather than having to go on campus? Uh, perhaps Sean, would you like to? So May was delivered essentially all online at Bond. So no one was really allowed to come to campus. All students that kind of like you guys, anybody that lives in Queensland, our campus is now open. So we're encouraging students to come back on campus now. But if you're from some of the areas that aren't coming in, we do have the option of you being able to watch online. So it's kind of now moving more to like a multimodal situation. But again, one last thing I want to say is we really, if you can come to campus, we want you on campus. That's where we, we feel we do our best work. So. Okay. Thank you. And under what circumstances will unis accept applications for EAS for educational disruption due to COVID? Gabby, did you want to have a go at that one? Essentially, it's going to be the same as in previous years. It'll still be the same categories that we look at with EAS. So your financial hardship, uh, illness, personal circumstances. Yeah. Um, we have had discussions with QTAC and, you know, everyone's been affected by COVID. If yeah. everyone put in an application for EAS, it kind of cancels each other out. So we're kind of probably going to be looking at the same categories um, from here on in. Okay, thank you. And perhaps one for Lauren. If you do better in year 11 than year 12, will you still base admissions criteria on year 11 results? So with the ACU guarantee program, they solely base them on the ACU, sorry, on your year 11 results. Um, if you do apply through QTAC, you will have to base them on 12, year 12 results. Um, but the great thing is you can apply through both. So the ACU um, guarantee program doesn't have an admission fee. Uh, so you can apply through that and QTAC and uh, see how you go. But yeah, if you definitely, if you did better in, in year 11 and you're really wanting to go to ACU, um, apply through that ACU guarantee program. Thank you. Um, one other question here is, my son is interested in undertaking the Bachelor of Information Technology and Bachelor of Arts at UQ. However, it has a prereq of math methods and is currently studying maths general. What can he do to over overcome this issue? That is, is there a bridging subject he can undertake prior to being accepted into that degree? Is this offered by UQ or would it have to be sourced elsewhere? And if so, where? There's a few questions in there, Jaden. Sorry, all at once. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, yeah, so at UQ, we do have prerequisites, a requirement you have done certain subjects. Good thing is there are plenty of options around that, okay? Uh, let's say mathematical methods, a student hasn't done that. We do have UQ College at our St. Lucia campus, which run four week intensive courses at the end of every year. So normally end uh, mid-November to mid-December, it is held over school these weeks. So some students are always a bit, mm, should I build it up? But there is a cost involved. Once students do that four week intensive course, we'll tick them off to say they've met that prerequisite requirement so they can start their program the semester one the following year, okay? There is a fee involved, it's around $1,200, but there are other ways around that. In this instance, the Bachelor Arts, Bachelor IT, the student could go into a Bachelor Arts first, in that first year of study, pick an intro maths course, which would meet the mathematical methods requirement. Once they've passed that course, they could apply at the end of the year to upgrade to include comma, uh, IT sorry, into their study plan. Um, that's just two options you can do. You could do QT, Griffith, they've all got bridging programs as well, which will also meet that mathematical methods requirement. So we do have a fact sheet on our website, a massive table outlining what, which bridging programs are approved to meet those subjects. So yes, it can be done. So don't panic if you haven't completed a certain subject at high school. There are ways around that. But yes, you just might need to miss schoolies. Yes, no schoolies. Shame. You can do the tenth course okay. if that goes ahead. All right. So just one question uh, for the defence force uh, reps. I didn't see batch of aviation on your presentation. Is this available as part of ADFA? So we don't do bachelor of aviation. We do 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 uh, multiple. Uh, I suppose aviation specific engineering degrees. Um, but if you're looking to go into piloting, uh, we have both a 
an ad for entry option and a direct entry option as well. Um, so you can come straight in with those minimum year 12 education requirements, pass, uh, pass the respective uh, um, assessments to get into a pilot course, and then we can train you uh, as a pilot in either fast jets uh, or any other fixed wing with an air force or rotary across uh, Navy and Army. Um, or you can elect to study any degree of your choice through Australian Defence Force Academy and then pursue a role as a pilot in any of the three services after that's completed. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. And one other question for you as well. Can you enter the Defence Force Uni Scholarship if you complete a gap year in one of the Defence Services? Sorry, say that again. Can you enter the Defence Uni Scholarship if you complete a gap year in one of the Defence Services? Yeah, absolutely. So I suppose the intent uh, of gap year is, a, is an exposure to defence to determine whether it's suitable for you uh, and whether it's uh, obviously, uh, you know, something you want to pursue full-time uh, or part-time down the track. So do that year. Your options post-gap year um, are essentially the same as a candidate looking at defence for the first time. So you can take that 12 months, you know, earn that, earn that cash, $50,000 plus during that 12 months, get that professional and personal development, get a bit of exposure to defence, uh, and then pursue any of the other pathways across defence. So you could come in as a general entry infantry soldier in a combat corps, do that for 12 months, and then say, hey, I want to go and do uh, DUS, uh, or I want to go and uh, study uh, you know, uh, aeronautical engineering at uh, Australian Defence Force Academy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all the questions that we have for tonight. So I just wanted to recap um, just the main things, I guess, to take away is the QTAC application process, you do need to make sure that you get it right. Um, as, as I've said during the presentation, I do check them, but there are some, some things that I can't check for, for example, if you've paid the fee. So please make sure that you, that you do that. Um, the thing to remember, I guess, uh, for most of the universities is that please apply for scholarships, even if you think you might be eligible, um, make sure that you do apply. Um, it's really well worth the effort. Okay, just like, to close now um, and provide a special thank you uh, to Belinda Morley, who was fundamental in setting up tonight, uh, Megan Brearley and Raoul Carmody, uh, Nick Flanders also. So thank you very much for, to all those people who assisted in creating um, a successful evening for us all. Um, I'd like you to thank our special guests, please. Lauren Gilla, Gilmore, beg your pardon, sorry. Um, uh, Corporal Ballard, Stuart Jacobs, Sean Johnson, Gabby Brown, Madison Jensen, and Jaden Wiedemann. Thank you. Okay. One, final, one final note. If you do have um, questions about QTAC application, please do come and see me. Um, you just come by the Learning and Teaching Office and just make an appointment and we can set something up for you then. So on that note, good evening, everybody. We can uh, now go home. Thank you. Thank you.